name is Courtney Adamson and this is my analysis of Night Mother by Marsha Norman for the Intro to Script Analysis class. Um, Marsha Norman was a white or is a white middle class to upper class woman. Um, she received her bachelor's degree in humanities from U of L in 1969. Um, after that, she became a journalist and she worked on several reviews of books and plays um, from the Louisville Times. Um, Miss Marsha ended up having two divorces in her lifetime, which was one of the, I think, one of the contributing factors to our main character, Jesse. Um, Jesse also had experienced divorce within the play, um, and I feel like some of those emotions that Miss Norman felt could have contributed to the plot. Uh, Miss Norman moved to New York City in 1983, and that is when she wrote Night Mother and was published. Um, and for Night Mother, she actually won the Pulitzer Prize, and it was one of the pushing off points to her very successful career. Um, the intended audience, I believe, was probably mostly from middle aged to older generations of people. Um, mostly because of the topics discussed within the play. There's talk of, um, you know, your spouse dying or your mother or father dying. Um, it talks about divorce. Um, it also talks about um, your grown children not living up to your expectations. And that could be from um, failed pursuits, it could be from drugs or alcohol, crime, so on and so forth. Um, you know, suicide and mental health were not, you know, readily discussed in the 80s. Um, in, you know, home or schools or churches, it was kind of swept under the rug. And that is why this play created such an uproar because it just wasn't talked about. So when it was released, it was really kind of, it was a big shocker to audiences. Um, some major events that happened during the time were um, the election of Ronald Reagan, Ronald Reagan um, and then also the growing Iran-Iraq war. I think the war at the time kind of added a layer to why people didn't discuss mental health and suicide. Um, if people felt like their problems were smaller than the larger ones at hand, so they felt like it wasn't worth being discussed. Um, we also, <coughs> excuse me, we also have the AIDS epidemic that was happening as well. So people didn't talk about sexual health either. You know, the LGBT plus community was very much coming out of their shell at the time. And it was not a safe place for people to express themselves. And so, you know, that adds another layer onto the mental health of individuals. Um, Night Mother is classified as a tragedy. Jesse Cates is very obviously a tragic figure um, and it definitely creates an effective response um, in, within the audience. Um, Night Mother is also a climactic drama, and I will point out the climax of the play um, in my summary to you. And it also falls into the modern category because it's dealing with real life situations that audience members um, may have dealt with or they're dealing with currently. Um, because like I said, the intended, the intended audience or these middle aged to older generations of people, and so there's a lot to unpack that has happened to Jesse um, and Thelma within this play. And so, you know, I feel like there's a lot of places that audience members can connect with these two people. Um, so the summary of the play, we have Jesse Cates, which is a middle-aged woman, and then her mother, Thelma, who is probably in her mid-60s to 70s. Um, and the play begins with Jessie gathering all of her things up, packing everything, sorting it and putting it away, even leaving little gifts for her mother to find after she has passed. Um, she's getting everything prepared so her mother will not have to deal with the burden of all of these things. She can just grieve and let her daughter go. 
and Jessie pays special attention to that when she's preparing things. Um, Thelma is very obviously oblivious to what is happening and oblivious to everything that her daughter has felt. Um, and I think that adds a reason to why this play is so important because um, it's important to pay attention to the signs that people dealing with mental illness are facing. Um, so continuing on with the summary of the play, um, Jessie continues to pack things together and she asks her mother where her father's gun is at. And once she does that, she gets the gun and tells her mother she's going to commit suicide that evening. Thelma does not believe her at first, and she thinks it's a joke. Um, and that's another reason, you know, I think it's important to talk about this because, you know, people in the 80s did not take it seriously. And that is a key point. Thelma not thinking that it is serious points to that. Um, so the whole night, once Thelma realizes that it's a serious situation, they go on and they argue back and forth about why it's happening. And ultimately, Jessie locks herself in the room and Thelma is beating and screaming at the door for her to come out and to not do it. And this is the climax of the play. Um, Jessie, we hear a gunshot and that is when Jessie, you know, she's done what she set out to do um i think that we see a lot of times um the american dream can be the inspiration for some plays um but this is more of the failed american dream you know we see this young woman or middle-aged woman who has dealt with nothing but tragedy in her life and she has found no no good has come of it um, and so we don't see those things happening, but we can tell by the emotion and how she's telling us um, about these stories that she's gone through, the, you know, the emotion and the weight that she's feeling. Um, the setting takes place in mostly two to three small rooms, living room, kitchen, bedroom, but it mostly takes place within the walls of the house. Um, I think that this is important because it is such an intimate, small space, um, and there's such a large weight of things being talked about. It's kind of a stark contrast because the space is so small, um, and the things they're talking about are so big, um, and, you know, Thelma's throwing things around, and she's angry, and Jesse is crying, and it's upset, and it's so all bottled up in this house, just like their emotions are bottled up within themselves. So I thought that was kind of interesting to see that it all took place in this small space. Um, religion obviously plays a huge role in the morality of this. Um, you know, Thelma tells Jesse that committing suicide is the ultimate sin. And, you know, she was probably raised to think that way. And so, you know, Jessie might not have talked to her mother about this before then because she knew her mother's thoughts and she already knew what she was going to say to her. Some symbols we see are the clocks, sweets, and the lists. Um, the clocks basically represent a countdown, a timeline, if you will, of Jessie's life. Um, and, you know, it's also a timer of um, counting down the hours from when she decides to commit suicide. Um, the sweets um, or for her mother, but I think that they kind of represent the good in life amidst all this tragedy, um, you know, because when you're feeling down, some people um, turn to sweets for their comfort, and so I kind of feel like that is a little bit of good within um, all of this mess that's happening inside this small house. And then the lists. Um, Jessie is also epileptic, and she said, that she created these lists to kind of help her remember and keep her on task as she's doing things around the house. Um, so she said that not it did not become clear what the list meant to her until she made the decision to commit suicide. And I think this is because she had waited, you know, yes, I'm going to do it. No, I'm not going to do it for so long that she her brain could not focus on what the meaning of the list was. Um, so overall, I think that this play has a lot to teach us, 
Um, I think it's very important to talk about mental health and suicide and check on our loved ones, especially now during the midst of COVID. Um, I think it's important that um, if people don't watch this play, if they're still educated about this topic. Um, so I thank you for listening to me today.